we've had our time of worship, including preaching God's word and learning more about the position of shepherd. We've sang hymns. We've had prayer together. We've given our tithes and offerings, all with the intent of honoring God. The installation that we're about to embark on is a corporate activity. It's a solemn transaction. Everyone in this room participates. There'll be oaths taken, promises made pointedly. Do you promise? We'll be praying together. We are all witnesses to God's position, provision, and he is with us. Be more than a spectator. The particulars from the Westminster Confession of Faith regarding oaths. A lawful oath is a part of a religious worship wherein, upon just occasion, the person swearing solemnly calleth God to witness what he asserteth or promiseth, and to judge him according to the truth or falsehood of what he sweareth. Doug will be our 23rd pastor. And as the elders discussed the installation process, we requested that it be done in the morning, following our time of worship, because we wanted families involved. Twenty times, twenty-two times, before today, 237 years, It's a big deal. And to participate is an honor. So thus, Phil and Doug will present the oath, and then we'll participate some more. Doug, would you stand down here before me in the congregation? Doug Warren, are you now willing to take charge of this congregation as their pastor? agreeable to your declaration and accepting its call? Are you? I am. Do you conscientiously believe and declare, as far as you know your own heart, that in taking upon you this charge, you are influenced by a sincere desire to promote the glory of God and the good of the church? Do you? I do. Do you solemnly promise that by the assistance of the grace of God, you will endeavor faithfully to discharge all the duties of a pastor to this congregation and will be careful to maintain a deportment in all respects, becoming a minister of the gospel of Christ, agreeable to your ordination engagements. Do you? I do. The Lord bless you and keep you in all the labors and all the trials of your office. Amen. And as Doug has just vowed to lead us, it is appropriate that we also vow to be led. And to follow his leading us in the years to come. This means being under his leadership, under his discipline, and it also means supporting him. I say that specifically because as we make these oaths, the fourth one is a little bit difficult to understand due to the old English that's used in it. And basically, it means that we agree to support him physically and financially as we bring him on as 23rd pastor. So if uh, you agree, 
After I say, do you, would you please raise your right hand and say, we do, to each of these four oaths. Do you, the people of this congregation, continue to profess your readiness to receive Doug Warren, whom you have called to be your pastor? Do you? Do you promise to receive the word of truth from his mouth with meekness and love and to submit to him in the due exercise of discipline? Do you? Do you promise to encourage him in his labors and to assist his endeavors for your instruction and spiritual edification? Do you? Do you engage to continue to him while he is your pastor that competent worldly maintenance which you have promised and to furnish him with whatever you may see needful for the honor of religion and for his comfort among you? Do you? We do. At this time, I'd like to invite all elders of this church, whether you're active or inactive, um, to please come forward. And that elders from other Christian churches are welcome to come forward also. Let us pray together. Almighty Father, we, we're so thankful for this day, this service, and that all, all it represents. We've been without a pastor for a long time, and that's been your will for this, this body. But we are so thankful that you have brought this man to us. Father, we realize that you have set him apart, that you cherish him, that you have given him gifts, but you have, you've also, with those gift, gifts, placed great demands. Father, we pray for him. We ask that you would Help him to be a multitasker. And by that I mean that he be constant in prayer and that he meditate on your word day and night and at the same time he carry out those duties that he has taken upon himself and that you have given to him. Father, we also ask that you keep the evil, evil one from him. Satan will confront, confuse, challenge, especially those men and women who serve you well. Father, I ask that you would help him to not lean on his own understanding, but yours. Father, give him the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge that are necessary to rightly divide your word of truth and to lead and shepherd this flock, this body, at the First Congregational Church of Woodstock. Father, keep him from growing weary in his work. It's demanding, and those demands come from every corner. They will tax him physically, mentally, emotionally, 
But Father, give him the discipline to know what his limits are and not to fall into the threat of depression or illness. Father, help him to be forgiving because there will be those who offend. They may not even mean to. But I ask that you give Doug a thick skin. Help him to be quick to forgive and slow to be offended. Father, keep pride from him and his life. Pride is a great enemy. It attacks us even when we're really doing well. <laughs> it's the nature of the beast. Help him to be humble, Lord. And Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be unencumbered in his life. We ask that Doug and his family would glorify you and enjoy you forever. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. amen. <clears throat> So, Doug, we give you the right hand of fellowship to take part in this ministry with us. And we would like to invite the congregation after uh, the service today to likewise uh, extend to Doug the right hand of fellowship. now pronounce and declare that Doug Warren has been regularly elected, ordained and installed pastor of this congregation, agreeable to the word of God and according to the bylaws of the First Congregational Church of Woodstock, and that this, as such, he is entitled to all support, encouragement, honor, and obedience in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, Doug, turn around. <laughs> this is not a second sermon. This is aimed specifically at you. And it feels a little odd for me to be the one doing this. I had to look up this week to see if you gave me mine when I was installed uh, as pastor at Free Grace. You didn't. You were serving in Dave's place as the presiding minister. So you did most of the rest of it, but you were not the one who gave the charge. I can't just tell you back the same things you told me. You're stuck with my words. So what is your duty as pastor of First Congregational Church of Woodstock? Well, Richard Baxter in 1656 spent 220 pages talking about the duties of a reformed pastor. My copy of Spurgeon's lectures to his students where he laid out those same duties runs 443 pages. Even in today's world of shorter attention spans, Eugene Peterson spent 241 pages laying out the five smooth stones of pastoral work, and John preached for however long it was already on your duties this morning. So I obviously can't go through all of them. I'm not going to charge you with every single one of them. The elders have laid those out as to their understandings and your conversations through this process. What I want to do this morning is to step behind those, to look at what underlies all of those. To do that, I want to read a parable that Jesus told that's found for us in Luke 18. We're told that he told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, 
God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Those books I mentioned... You own all of them. They're probably over in the parsonage just across the street there. You've read them. You have other books that speak of the duties. They mention all sorts of the duties. John ran through some of them. Preaching, praying with and for, discipline and discipleship, care and counseling, administration, leadership, planning, missions, evangelism, and on and on and on. Over the years, you have learned your strengths and your weaknesses in these duties. You've experienced great joy and great pain through them. All of these are important. You know it, but I'm not going to talk about any of these this morning except to warn you to be wary of them. For the temptation is to see these duties as what makes you a good pastor. To see in these your duty to this congregation. But though you are called to all of these and so many other ones, they're not your primary duty. They are not what this congregation needs from their pastor, from you. For if you strive for these things, good and necessary though they are, they may think you're a good pastor. The church may do well. They may, the congregation may be content and happy, but you won't be the pastor that they need, the pastor that God has called to them here. All you are are the Pharisee in Jesus' parable. Lord, thank you that I'm not like all the rest. And all Jesus says that gets you is humbled. The duty that you need to remember as the pastor of the First Congregational Church of Woodstock, is to be the tax collector. No, I'm not talking about the tithes and the offerings. You know, others take those anyway. That's not your duty. I'm talking about the tax collector in the parable. I'm talking about your heart. Every day that you step out of the parsonage and cross the street to come and be the pastor of the First Congregational Church of Woodstock, you need to step into the temple of God's presence as the tax collector, standing far off, beating your breast and crying out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You need to come to work and acknowledge the depth of your sin, your need for the death of Jesus Christ, and to rest that conscious trust that John spoke of in Jesus Christ. And in him alone. Only then will you be ready to tackle all of the rest of those duties. Only then will you be the pastor that God has called to this church. Nothing you can do will have an impact on this, these people, on this church. Greater than this. Other than this. That every day you go home justified. Justified, having humbled yourself before God, crying out for his mercy upon you in Jesus Christ. This is your solemn charge this morning. To go home every day justified like the tax collector. the charge to the congregation that would be you and the importance of loving Doug as a shepherd his family and you have some idea of the charge now has been preached has been eloquently described by pair 
Won't you pray with me? O oh, my most precious Heavenly Father, we praise you for ordaining events like this in the life of the church. That we partake in glorifying your name by the meditations of our heart, the words we speak, and the diligence with we take our responsibilities seriously. Lord, may we grow in our commitment to serving you humbly, living in obedience to these truths we've heard some of this morning and forevermore as you have us in this place at this hour. Thank you for your gift of mercy, the love of the brethren that go beyond our understanding that we could celebrate this new chapter and what's ahead. Use the Warrens effectively. May they see Christ because of the work that will take place by our new shepherd. I pray all these things through Christ our King, that Jesus. Amen. Okay, if you'll all stand and rise, we will sing a great Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, number 92.
hope that you can stay and enjoy some refreshments in the Billings Room uh, after the, the service. Hear now God's benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless and with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now, and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.